Hi everyone, in this video we are going to look at JWT that is JSON Web Tokens. So if you look at the official site, uh, what it says is JSON Web Tokens are an open industry standard RFC 7519 method for representing claims securely between two parties. And two parties here is, I know it can be a client application and the server application. Okay, uh, so the token is exchanged between these two parties. So why do we need uh, JSON Web Tokens? And how can we make use of it? To answer this, let's first look at a scenario where you know we have a security uh, plugin in our application that is the REST application and we have a client. And the REST application being a stateless that means there is no session management. So any request that is going to come in, it's a, you know, it's going to consider it has it has to go through that authentication mechanism, right? In no way it's going to remember the um, the user. So any request uh, coming in, um, so at the client at the server side, what we're going to have is we're going to have a mechanism uh, to authenticate and then on successful authentication we are going to allow the access to the endpoint now this is going to happen for every request right and if you do that for every request what is going to happen is the client has to send the user credentials in every request so which is something that is you know is not recommended and not a standard way of doing the call to the rest application so jwt that is json web token helps in you know uh, in achieving that mechanism where the server can somehow decode the token that is coming in the request and fetch the user details from it so what happens is when the client initially logs into the application then the server creates a token okay and uh, definitely server will um, consider few parameters and generate the token and this token is then sent back in the response to the client and the client thereafter for any request okay to the server will send that token in the request and then at the server side what the the logic that in the security uh, implementation will have is will decode that token and fetch the user details now that way you know we will you know we will avoid authenticating the same client for every request okay so the authentication will happen only once and the token will be generated only once it's just that the decoding and validation of that token will happen for every request okay so that's how we are going to use the jwt in our application so let's see what are the you know what are the parameters are uh, in um, in jwt so if you look at the side here if you scroll down you have something here you can see there are three main parts of jwt header payload and the signature the header represents two main parameters that is the algorithm that you're going to use okay and the algorithm is you know you can see that there are a list of algorithms that you can use and the type of token and here it is jwt so you are using jwt so those are the two parameters that we will be using as a header and then we have the payload the payload is basically the data that you are going to add in the token okay for example the subject here uh, and is going to be the user id it can be a user id or username okay but again the payload has three main other para you know parts uh, to say it has uh, uh, it has registered claims it has public claims and it has private claims so the registered claims are something that the token already has for example it has subject it has issuer expiration time and uh, audience 
So all these are something we can call as, as predefined claims. Okay. Uh, and these are not mandatory, but it is always recommended to, you know, have those registered claims defined when you are, you know, generating a token. Then you have public claims and these are basically defined at will by those using JWTs. That what it means is um, these are something like public APIs. Okay. And then we have private claims. Now private claims are the custom claims. That means you can create your own claim and add it in the payload. Now when I'm saying claims, these are nothing but, you know, again, um, uh, these are the data again that will be, you know, adding into the payload. Okay, uh, it is combination of, you can see here, it's a combination of key and value. Okay, so that is called one claim. Um, so we can have our own claims by using private claims. Okay, and then finally we have is the signature. Now signature is a combination of the encoded header, encoded payload, that is nothing but a base 64 URL encoded header and payload and and the very important part is the secret key and this secret key is only available at the provider side but what it means is in our in a two parties that is client and the server the server will always have the key and that key is very much secured and never exchanged with any of the parties other than you know when, other than it is being used to generate the token okay so that is something that is added here and then it is then it it generates the signature using the algorithm finally all this combination together then we get something like this when it's encoded you get this okay so it's always recommended that you know the payload what type of data that you now you you might be having a question that what type of data you um, you add in your payload remember that it's always recommended to not add any sensitive data like password you never want to add a password here right you don't want to add some some very much personal data of the user right it can be any identification you know card number or credit card details and all those something something that is not is more sensitive is not recommended to add it over here you can add username or user id or you can add roles or authorities that's fine right but not anything that is more sensitive so hope you get that so that is something that you can add in the payload and this is again a base 64 url encoded so that means anyone can come here and put that um, token and get and get those payload information but it is just that the signature verification okay will be valid it will be verified to true only when you give the secret key which was used by the provider and that secret key is only available at the provider end right so that's how the validation will be done at the um, server side that is uh, in our case it is a rest application in the so in the security implementation we'll have uh, a logic where the token when received we will try to decode using that secret key and when uh, if, if, the, if, uh, the, if the validation is success it would say that signature verified okay and if there is any uh, tamper with the encoded token then the signature verification will fail and that's how we will come to we can make a decision whether the token is a valid or invalid okay so if you scroll down uh, and you can see that uh, depending on the language programming language you are using there are different I know implementation or the libraries that you can use uh, to create the token and make use of uh, it so as we are using you know Java so if you scroll down you can see that there are many implementation of Java that is um, sorry the token 
uh, JW token. And in our case, what we are going to do is we are going to use IO dot JSON web token, this one. Okay. And uh, now I think you are clear with what JWT is and how it is used in, you know, client and rest application and why we need to use it. Okay. So with this information, uh, what we're going to do is in our next session, we are going to implement JWT in our rest application. Okay. So that's all for this video till then. Take care. Thank you.